there are those who believe that the greatest PC peripherals were not invented on primitive Earth, but in a far, far away place across the galaxy, a place called Switzerland. And through superior technology and ergonomic design, they have progressively spread across the computing universe. They call themselves Logitechs. Okay, we're going for something a little different on Workshop Quick Takes today. Um, I've got this mouse that I've had for a while. This is a Logitech MX Anywhere 2S that I picked up at some point. And this is one of those ones that has the integrated uh, rechargeable battery with a USB port. and has a really long battery life. I can't even remember the last time I plugged this one in. And it uses Logitech's newer style. They've got their little Logi logo as opposed to Logitech like they used to have. And then... Along with that, then they've got this newer, sharper styling. Kind of looks more like a GM's Cadillac design language from the early 2000s. A legend reborn. This versus this here, which is nice and rounded, like an old Ford Taurus or something. And then, more recently, I got a hold of this. This is the MX Master 2S. This one here has uh, some additional buttons. I mean, this one here, you know, you've got the forward, backward, You've got the middle click, you've got left click, right click, and then you've got scroll. And then there's this auxiliary button here. And it does have one nice additional feature. If you press the button all the way down and then release, now you go from clicky scroll to smooth scroll. And smooth scroll will just kind of keep spinning until it runs out of steam. I like the clicky scroll better for most applications, but with the MX Master 2S, they did something different. You still have clicky scroll and smooth scroll, but the way you switch between them is by pressing this button right here. Smooth scroll. Clicky scroll. Uh, there's an, also a side scroll button. I still haven't figured out what to do with this. It's in theory supposed to work as like a lateral scroll within Windows, but I haven't been able to get it to do that. And then forward, backward. There's an additional programmable button actually down in the grip here. And then you still, of course, have your left, right, and center. One different feature though that's kind of interesting on this is, as you'd expect, when you are in smooth scroll mode, you spin the wheel and it just keeps going. When, however, you are in clicky scroll mode, yeah, if you start spinning it, there's some sort of flywheel governor in there that releases, and then it goes into infinite scroll mode until either it runs out of steam and click, or if you tap it, then it also stops instantly, which is kind of interesting, a little bit of an improvement on what they put in this. What's more interesting, however, is how I got this. Um, my mother works at a public library and they have computers and so things end up in lost and found. Amazing things. Things that people you'd think would come back for such as an expensive mouse but gets left in the drawer and there's no way of identifying it then they wait for the person to claim it and finally they have to clean that out periodically. And so I ended up with an MX Master 2S. Now there's actually a version 3 of this mouse floating around now and one thing I think I would like better about that versus this is that these two forward and back buttons that are just sort of above each other and you kind of got to go like this to get at them, they separated them so they're a little bit more like this, front and back, which makes more sense to me. I haven't yet synced it to this laptop. This one I have, and this one in the meantime is actually still operating because it's on the docking station. And this is an older MX510. So far, this has been my go-to mouse. It works great with AutoCAD, so I like to use it at the office. It has a clicky wheel too, but it has a little bit more of a definite feel than this, more of a precise feel, and um, Windows tends to pick that up better when you're working in AutoCAD, in my opinion anyway. And the forward and back button, uh, buttons are larger and more accessible, so I like the way this one holds, and this is my go-to mouse, so these I'm just sort of playing with right now as toys. But I thought today, we'll set this one aside, and just see what happens with these two. We'll get a better look at them. So first of all, I've got a laptop here. This one's already connected to it. So if I turn it on, it shows up as device two. 
Yeah, I guess this one is synced to this laptop as device two. I might have it synced to another laptop as device one. That's another feature both of these do. They have these three sync buttons down here, and you can Bluetooth sync this to three different devices and then just press this to scroll between which device you want to control. So this one here, look on the screen, it's controlling it right now, and that's all well and good. Um, let's give ourselves a new window to work with here. And just to see how it kind of works, let's go to a website such as YouTube, why not, that happens to have infinite scrolling. So for example, if I come to the bottom of this window, you'll notice that it just loads a whole bunch of new stuff and the scroll bar jumps up a bit. And so if I do this with the wheel, then it tries to load as much as it can. Now let me scroll back up since I have all this currently loaded and then just, yeah. It runs out of steam and stops. So let me try uh, clicking it into the infinite scroll mode. Yeah, see how it just keeps going? The uh, mouse until the wheel actually spins down. We'll just keep trying to load up or down. Okay, let's go to instead this mouse. Now I haven't actually connected this mouse to this device yet. But let's try two. When I switch to two, you'll notice it's not connected to anything, so it's flashing rapidly. It's trying to pair. Let's open up Bluetooth on this laptop. And I am looking at an MX Anywhere 2S. That's this guy, he's connected. Let's go ahead and add a Bluetooth or other device. Aha, it makes it Master 2S, there it is. Now I've never connected two Bluetooth mice to a computer at once, so let's see what happens. Seriously though, look at this. They're both working just like normal, as you'd expect. And in fact, if I pick up this one, which is still paired to the dock, lo and behold, three mice, two hands. What a deal. I can control this infinitely. Now you'll notice, I also just popped up with this, would you like to install the software package? And that's for this guy. So why not? Let's go ahead and install that and see what it puts on here. So it's now downloading that. While it's doing that, let's go back to YouTube here just for fun and see what happens with the uh, scrolling thing here. Now you'll notice I'm in clicky mode. And in clicky mode, look at that. As soon as I spin it hard, then it goes to infinite scroll mode for a minute, which is kind of interesting. As soon as I stop it, then bingo. Okay, looks like our software's popped up. It downloaded this automatically. I didn't have to put any install media in here. Install Logitech Options. Uh, no thanks on analytics data for now. And we'll give it a minute to see what it does here. There we go. Wow, who knew a mouse could need so much software just for a couple bonus buttons? Okay, this here is offering me the option to create an account and then it will automatically upload my mouse settings. So when I take this to a different device and sync it, I can just log back into that account and poof, it loads them all. It will automatically configure the mouse for you for whatever custom things you've got going. So that would be useful. Anyway, I'm gonna bypass this screen. Now notice here, aha, look at this. Three Logitech devices, and it identified them all with a picture, which is pretty sweet. Let's see if we can replicate that. Oh, there we go. Neat. But that's okay. I'm not going to add any more devices, so I'll go ahead and click past that. And there we go. Okay, so now if I go back and open Logitech Options, look at that. I've got my three mice again. I can pick which one to configure. So I'll go ahead and click on this one. And notice that here's the mouse. It's helping me out by pointing out where different buttons are. So I've got my little uh, base button down here. I've got the uh, cycler here. I've got the wheel and click button here. I've got the side scroll wheel and then my forward and back buttons. So if I go to point and scroll here, cool. Uh, I can enable or disable smooth scrolling. I can change, reverse the scroll wheel direction, thumb wheel direction, thumb wheel sensitivity. Um, click learn more if I want to, I don't. Uh, Flow, welcome to Logitech Flow. I have no idea what this is. I'm not going to play with it today, but supposedly I could set up two laptops and actually have the mouse jump between them. 
Okay. But there we are. Pretty sweet. So you gotta hand it to Logitech. They've been in the peripheral game a long time and they do a good job with this stuff. I'm happy to see that their control app has been cleaned up considerably as well. I think what I would like to do next is maybe see if I can pop this one open and get an idea of what that scroll governor looks like because I am really curious how they did that. Okay, next step. Let's see if we can safely pop this open and by safely I mean non-destructively which looks at least possible because there are two screws here. They do have a, a star drive head and I actually had to pull a screwdriver out of my uh, cell phone repair tools because it's so small down there, but let's give it a shot. I don't know what to make of that. Maybe I need not even, uh, let's see what else I got in here. If this doesn't do it, I might have to go get one of my iFixit kits. Well, here's another one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's much happier. Okay, set those screws aside where I won't lose them. Magnetic screw holder is a beautiful thing. If you don't have one, get one. This is only a few bucks at Harbor Freight. So now let's try my spudger here. So I want to, uh, oh, look at that. Tore the end right off the spudger. Well, this may not work as well as I hoped because I'm not quite sure how Logitech put this, put this together. I don't know. Maybe if I can find like an iFixit video or something that tells me exactly where the pop points are. Alright, now let's take a look inside this and see what we can find out about it. Initially I had some trouble trying to get into this. I looked on YouTube and discovered it's because Logitech's messing with us. Here are these two beautiful little screws, tiny little things using uh, Torx or Starhead drives. So I take out one. And again, if you don't have a magnetic screw holder, get something like this. Saves so much aggravation. Just like four or five bucks at Harbor Freight, I think is what I paid for that. I really have got to figure out how to get Harbor Freight to sponsor me on these things. Or maybe Logitech. I mean, anyone who wants to throw money at me, I take money, so. Okay. Two screws out. Should just pop right open. Probably some plastic crips back here or, or something like that, right? Maybe a little spudger tool. Bam, nah, no, no, no. You'll, you'll uh, drive yourself mad until you discover, yes, these two little uh, slider grips are hiding two more screws each. So hopefully once we get these out, this whole thing will just pop apart very nicely. Looks like it's gonna pop apart pretty cleanly. So there's the entire top assembly. It's got the uh, buttons and everything in the roller all connected down via these uh, new ribbon cable assembly. So cool. It's a lot like taking apart a laptop really. There's the rechargeable battery pack. And then the part I'm really curious about is this wheel. So let's take a look here. What's going on with that? Actually, how does that work? Oh, okay, there we go. Interesting. Okay, I see, so... Yeah, that button up there. Oh, interesting. I thought that was a mechanical assembly, but it's actually a type of a... Uh, Electronic drive. Okay, so what is that doing? Oh, I see. Okay, there's some sort of motor or solenoid assembly in here that's actually handling that. So it's, when you spin the wheel hard, what it's doing is it's actually throwing this out and then catching it again. I thought maybe it was a mechanical flywheel governor, but it's not. It appears to all be electric. So yeah, normally you scroll like this, and then if it detects you throwing it really hard, then this solenoid, I think, throws that piece out and puts it into the freewheeling mode until you either stop it or it runs out of steam and slows down on its own. So it's, it's all an electronic system. Interesting. But there you have it. So, clever little device. Actually, almost a little bit overwrought in terms of all that it does, but it works. So, what can you say? Cool. Hopefully I have not destroyed it, can put it back together and everything working again.
Okay, now that we've got it back together, we can actually prove what's going on with that solenoid. I'm going to go ahead and shut the power off for a second. You'll notice right now it's currently locked in the clicky mode. If I press that button, nothing happens. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now it's doing two things. First of all, it's still clicking, but if I start spinning it, it goes into freewheeling mode. And if I press this, it goes back and forth between the two modes. And every time you, I press it, you can hear a slight little click in there, which is that solenoid rocking back and forth and flipping that little lever we saw. Interestingly, if I now shut it off, it's still in freewheeling mode. So apparently that solenoid actually isn't operating all the time. It's simply cycle, 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 cycle. But it looks like it defaults back to clicky mode if I turn it on. Yep. So anytime you turn the mouse on, it will default to clicky mode regardless of where it was left when it was shut off. Hope I don't regret doing what I'm about to do next in order to set those. Okay, right there feels like a reasonable distance. We'll see if those stay down. If they don't, I'll have to put some new adhesive backing on them, but I think we have our mouse back. Well, I think that's about as much as we can learn from this today. It was an inter interesting little ride. I expected a little bit more mechanical things going on in there, and instead it was mostly being managed by a small microprocessor and it's miscellaneous hardware, so there you go. Would I buy it with my own money? Mm, maybe, if I was really looking for one. For free, though? Can't argue. I don't know what the MX Master 3 actually feels like in person because I haven't had one. But again, the main difference you can see if you're just visually, if you look at the photos, is that they fixed a rather annoying little problem with how the forward and back buttons are set up here so that they are more logically back and forward rather than stacked like this. Cool. But I'm not done yet. Attention, attention, incoming, scan for identification, see you all next time. Has anyone seen my phone?